In this video, I'm going to show you how to look at various kinds of response requirements for particular questions on your survey. Those um, are um, here on the survey. I've, I'm using here as an example the survey I started building in my overview of Qualtrics video that you can see on my channel, but this will work for any survey, so you don't really need to have built what I built here for this to work for you. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on any particular item Maybe I've clicked on this particular one here. What is your sexual orientation question? And I'm going to come down to where it says response requirements over here at the left. Make sure the question you want to add this to is got the blue outline on it. There's two options here. The requirements is about the add requirements is about requiring them to respond. The validation is about what kind of response they have to have. So let's say that I click on this add requirements here. I can do by just clicking that blue arrow, this blue thing here, or by just clicking on the add requirements words itself. There's two options. If I click on force response, it's going to not let them continue with the survey unless they respond. Um, so yes, it, it forces them to in the sense that they have to either leave the survey or they have to respond. They can't continue. And you'll see this asterisk pops up here. Okay, the other option here is request response. You'll also have an asterisk here. And that just gives them a, like a reminder, please respond to this question. But they can continue with the survey if they still do not want to respond to that particular question. Um, I might use this force response if it's really cr either critical to my study. If I, they don't respond to it, I don't really need their data at all. It, it isn't helpful to me to have their data or if it's like key to maybe branching on what they're going to be responding to later that that information is there so um so that that's how that particular one works now the ad validation um doesn't necessarily work so well with these um particular multiple choice items as with items where we've got a fill in the blank so let's say that i've got this um, fill in the blank here that's H, okay? And I want to make sure that they put a number, like numeral in there. They don't type out the word. So they don't like type out the word, you know, 23. Instead, they put the numeral 23. What I'm going to do is click on this add validation here, okay? There are various things you can do. You can, you know, tell them how long it has to be, minimum or maximum length. That might be useful if you have like an essay type response. But what I do most often is the content type. When you tell it content type, then you get this next little drop down available and you can, and it has to be one of these here. Most of these are fairly self explanatory. I'm going to click on number. Once I click on number, then I can put details about the number. Let's suppose that I want them to have a min, you know, I don't want them necessarily unless a minimum age of 18. I'll put some theoretical, you know, maximum age that could possibly happen um, in there. And that way um, it will just give them an error if they um, put in a value that's not between those two right here. Okay. And that could happen often with a typo. Now you, you want to probably put what's realistic in here. Let's say that you're um, collecting information from high school students. You want to put in there, you know, the reasonable age range that you could have for those high school students. It can prevent typos. Like if somebody meant to put in, you know, that their age was 16 and they put 160, it would catch that type of a typo and so forth. It doesn't catch all typos, you know, obviously, but um, um, it could catch ones that are, that are really clear and obvious. Um, so, so that's something that can be really helpful there. Um, obviously, if you put, if you want an email address, if you put that option in there, it's got to have that, you know, at in it and so forth. Um, it's got to look like an email address so that you do get the complete email address for them. So that's something that can be really useful, and I often do use that with ages, okay? And um, I don't use it this way so often, but again, in the comment box, you can add validation there. And in that particular case, maybe I want a certain um, minimum length, okay? Or I want to have certain types of characters and so forth. Um, character range maybe from 1 to 400 characters. Oops. Oops. 400 
might be a range of characters that I want. So basically that's the easiest way to, to put the length in there is just as a character range. So that's something that you can do with, with these particular questions in order to get them, again, formatted the way you want and get the kinds of responses you want out of them.